Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about something that really caused me a lot of trouble when I first started with Power C, and that is um, variables being stored on the stack, and that when you call them, when you try to put a pointer, point a pointer to one, and pass it to a function, bam, it's gone. I was like, what? What's going on? Well, now I've had some time. I figured out some solutions to it. So let's go ahead and get started. Actually, I've written a program that we're going to go ahead and take a look at. It's going to show you the problem, the memory locations of where variables are stored, and it's going to uh, show you the workarounds, solutions to it. So, change to our work disk, device 9. If you're working on your source disk you just you wouldn't have to type that but I have dual disks in here so I have to type it and uh, let's go ahead and go syntax checker editor and uh, t -t 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 ptr test dot c <clears throat> okay now here's what I've done there's a lot of things in here and um, let's not get confused by it all so I've got some global variables that's gonna be something I'm going to display later on just to show you guys where those are stored in memory um, global variables we'll get to it I'm not gonna explain it right now right now what I'm going to show you is we have some variables right here a float an int a character a string and just a regular character right here okay of these variables right here the float uh, can be passed to a function no problem the int can be passed to a function and it will be completely ruined the character constant can be passed and it'll be fine but the uh, character uh, M this one right here it, it won't work either because it'll be stored on the stack so let's see now go down here and I have some test pointers this is not really important right now right here we print the original values so we're gonna print the float the integer the string the character all before we call a function test one we're gonna pass pointers to the function so right here we're gonna assign the pointers to our variables and then we're gonna print pointers pass to PTR test there's PTR test now let's go down here to PTR test here we are PTR test gets all pointers passed to it so we get the float the int the character string and the character character pointer and let's see we have the float integer string character so when I run the program this is from within a function we're gonna see what happens the problem that happens so let me go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna compile this and link it because you guys still may be new to this and I want you to see how it's done again so let's go ahead and just resave like we edited it but we didn't um, I know the last video I was putting just the at symbol in the colon um, apparently that works uh, but you can also put the at symbol with the device number and that works too so whichever one so ptr test dot c <clears throat> and if you guys notice I got rid of the disk drive sounds because yeah that was annoying alright now we go to uh, oh <clears throat> remember check or ch to check our syntax now because I'm using the super CPU emulator that's why everything prints so fast if you're using your regular Commodore or if you're just using the regular vice simulator it's not gonna print that fast it's okay but just so you know quit CC dash P dash P because I'm using two disk drives and I don't wanna I don't wanna swap disks and have to hit keys um, CC dash P PTR test dot C
<clears throat> so the good thing is there's workarounds for this that we can so we can fix the problem in an elegant way and that was something I was concerned with when I first encountered the problem but luckily yeah, there's a decent ways to work it to get around it so there's actually a number of ways there's like three ways to get around it so that's cool but I think there's one way that just stands out that's way better I guess on a Commodore this is a this is a big program. It takes a while. There we go. Link PTR test dot O. up arrow on my emulator's delete key could be different on yours uh, you'll have to search for it I set my keyboard layout uh, I used to have it on symbolic but I had to change it to positional because I could not locate the up arrow and maybe even some other keys I couldn't locate them on symbolic so I did it to positional and then I found the keys but it's a little bit more difficult on an emulator, that's for sure. There we go. Just hit enter, output, ptr, test.sh, remember .sh because we're going to run it in the shell. ptr test. Okay, here we go. The very first screen. Now you see at the top we have the original values, the float, and the integer, and the string, and everything we declared. And I just printed those out directly from the main function. Um, now below we have the pointers passed to PTR test. And oh, wait a minute, before we get to that, look up above here. You see the float memory location? It's high, it's 11,241 the integer notice how low it is that's in zero page okay and this is why we're this is why we have this problem is because anything stored in the zero page and then when you call an, a function zero page or the stack in zero page is wiped out to make room for the function to also have stack space so it's a method obviously to make things more efficient um, but in its efficiency it's not it's not completely compatible with what you would normally be used to with C but like I said there's workarounds for it so next pointers pass to PTR test notice the float pass is fine because it was at a high memory location the integer however look at that integer is not 100 it is now 11,241 and it is at memory location 43 that's where it's pointing to but that stack got erased string equals power C the string uh, constant is um, at a higher memory location it's fine your string constants always pass no problem but your character that is definitely not an M I don't know what that is but that's not an M at memory location 47 notice the memory locations are the same as up above but now they're different so okay so now let me go to the next step and we'll rerun this program 
Okay, CED PTR test dot C. All right, so now go down here and this is the first test we ran where we see the stuff didn't work right. Test two. Test two using array variables. Now, this was a suspicion I had that if I were to define these as arrays, now up above, look, see the array zero element. These are only one element to these arrays when I define them. Right here, test two arrays. See, each one's a one, one, one. When you do that, it no longer will place those on the stack. It will place them up in higher memory. Then the values will be preserved. Um, but actually, that was probably that was my third uh, thing I figured out. First thing I tried was, uh, well, first thing I tried, I think, was creating my own stack and trying to pass values to my pop and push. And I was like, no, this isn't working good. Then I did malloc. Malloc worked. But then I finally tried this method, and this was a pretty clean method. But I found a cleaner method. But anyway, right now, you can do it this way. So any array that you make, even with one element, will not be on the stack and can be passed to a function. Then, where are we doing? Oh, did we pass it? We did. So here we are. <clears throat> so we make our array f, array integer, float, character so float integer character passing array variables to function now we get out of this and we can see what that does just to confirm it works PTR test passing array variables to function right here the third paragraph float 3.14 integer 100 string equals power C character equals M. Notice all the memory locations are all high memory so they are all outside of the zero page. Matter of fact everything from this point on will be outside the zero page will be fine. Um, passing malloc pointers. Now this is all I did was just allocate memory for, uh, for a variable. So that's kind of cool. I mean you can do that at runtime and save your save some space in your executable size for loading if you want to do it that way. Well, no, actually you can't because the code probably for the memory allocation would probably take more space. So actually, no, there's no advantage to it. But anyway, passing malloc pointers and uh, those all preserve the contents. But when you make an integer or a character and you try to pass it to a function but as a pointer to those integers or characters it's not going to work remember that now we're really we're written into solutions so next let's see we have what do we do oh original now okay now I did this from inside of a function so let me show you that get out of here Let's see, CED PTR test dot C. So here's everything in main. I basically have copied everything from main and put it inside of a function right here. In this test, I put the character, I put the arrays at the very top just to show you that no matter where they are, even at the very beginning, they will not get placed in the stack memory because in Power C, your the first variables that you declare have priority to be in that stack memory. And that is so that it's much more efficient. And I think it's, I'm not sure right the second, I think it's 38 variables, but let me check. Okay, <clears throat> I don't know where I got 38 variables or 38 bytes from, um, but when I'm looking here at the book on page 7, it says, if a function contains many variables, declare those used most frequently first. That's because they'll be placed on the stack, although it doesn't expressly or explicitly say how many bytes are available. 
so I'm not entirely sure but basically if you're gonna have something like a loop or some other variable that you're gonna use a lot then you're gonna want that on the stack so basically all of this code that's in the sub sub function from main is the same thing as is what's in main and the same thing that happened in main will happen in this function um, I put it in here just so you could see that but it goes through all the same tests with uh, pointers that have been allocated right here and it goes through the arrays up here everything's exactly the same pretty much cut and paste and uh, so let's go ahead and continue and I will show you I guess we're gonna go to uh, some global variable oh no 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 we're not not just yet not just yet let's see here PTR test dot no, I don't need to do that there you go <clears throat> okay so first our main function now our sub function and you can see that pointers pass to the PTR test right here in the second paragraph. Um, well that's 100, that's 100, that's 100. I must have changed something. Let me take a look. Let's see what I changed. Test. Oh, C, D, C, D, PTR. Test. Let's see. Well, apparently I did make it different. I made this the other day, so I forgot. Let's see here. I think I was going to leave it the same, but then I was like, why bother? Who needs to see the same output? Ah, yes. Now what we've done here is different. Yes, 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 yes. I wasn't even paying attention to it. Uh, we have character, array, float, array, static, float. We use static. When we use static for float or integer or character, what it does is it makes the compiler put this into a higher memory. So it won't be in the zero page memory. So anything you declare as static won't be as efficient, but it will be something you can pass to a function uh, with a pointer to it. So that's good to know. So that's pretty much the best solution I think there is to the problem. If you have something that you do need to pass, something that doesn't require a lot of iterations, like a, a loop or something like that, declare it static, and then you can overcome the problem of not being able to pass a pointer to it. So that's that's a good solution for that. Um, now, we'll go back. And you guys already saw it, but I'll show you again, and then we'll see what happened with our global variables. So you see right here, I just hit enter, so the first screen went away, and this is the sub function. Everything works out perfectly in here because we have the static um, declaration, and now global int. All global variables apparently are located in higher memory, so they don't have any problem with that. Not that you would have a problem passing them. But just so you know that they are not efficient. Global variables are not as efficient, so you wouldn't want to use them as something you're going to change a lot. Uh, next, Let's see static ah uh, static ints. Now <clears throat> these uh, static ints have been declared in the uh, in a side of a function, and it does support static variables static in static character static float it supports them and when I hit enter again what this is is this is exiting the function and then going back to the function but you guys are gonna find out that power C supports it but supports it very well and uh, maybe too well so I'll show you in a second here press enter see there now we've gone back into the function we exited the function went back in the function now we incremented the int we incremented the character we incremented the float all of which have been incremented as you can see and one more time there it is now when we exit watch this PTR test here's globals next to be static static in four initially that was one 
and we left it at 3, now it's 4, now it's 5, now it's 6. PTR test. Now it's 7. The character's G. It just keeps going. It doesn't reinitialize. So, as I said, it supports it maybe a little too well. Um, even if I link the code and run it outside of the shell, it's exactly the same thing. So, but let's go ahead and show you the code that I'm talking about. PTR test dot C. So all the way down at the bottom. I guess you can see why I didn't want to write this program up while you guys watched. It would just be too time consuming. So I hope that the video is clear though. Pointer test this time using static. Yes. Original values. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Global variables, static variables. Now here's a static function. We have static int i equals one, static character c equals a, float equals 8.5, and you guys saw, and it comes down here and it increments all of these. And then where we called it, we called it three times from the main function. Was this it or did I just pass it? Yes, yes I did. Right here, uh, static function. One, two, three. So, as you can see, it does support static uh, variables and it maintains the value. The problem is, is it, it maintains it if someone were to exit your program and rerun it, which not not always something that happens, but it can happen, especially if you're making something in the shell that you want to be reused and it has, let's say you have some initialization that you want to check for, so you you make a static variable in it and it's a static variable, once it's initialized you set it to one or something to say yeah this is initialized so you don't ever do it again and then they go to run that, that function or run that program again, well now nothing will initialize because it will think that it's already initialized. That could pose a problem. It definitely could. Um, now let's see here. There was one thing I wanted to see about too was which function do we want to use? Maybe we should use the static function. I was trying to think of a workaround. Let's say I do have something that I want to be efficient. I do, I'm going to make a for loop or something like that. And I want it to be efficient, but I also want to be able to pass a pointer to it. So we have a static int right here of one. Now, I guess what we can do to cure the problem is we can make a regular int. So let's say we go int li for local int and we'll make that equal to i so at that point we can go to a for loop and let's go li less than 100 and li plus plus Um, yeah, because we'll see it in the end. I don't want to make it slower than it has to be. So that, that'll work. So now we're going to use it in a for loop. But when we're done, we're going to go ahead and reassign it to i equals li. Yes. And then that should be a good way to get efficiency and still be able to pass pointers and manipulate values. So let's go ahead and try that. I thought that would be a good workaround. If you guys have something better, you know, let me know. I'm all, I'm all ears. I just love programming this and love learning about it. Uh, PTR test dot C.
quit. Compile. I have two disk drives, so I use dash p, ptr test.c. So anyway, I really hope that a lot of people start using PowerC more because um, I hear people talk about it, but I don't see a lot of people using it. And uh, hopefully these videos will get people more on board with using this awesome, awesome compiler and uh, complete development set of tools right here. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Make sure maybe it takes a little bit more time. It's not as fast as cross developing but it sure is a lot more fun to use your actual hardware than to sit there at an IBM and poke away at it never use a real Commodore for it but it's all a matter of it's all a matter of uh, preference whatever you like best Okay, now let's link it. PTR test dot O. Delete from my up arrow in my emulator. And that uh, up arrow links all the standard library object code. test.sh because we're going to run it in the shell that's why we have .sh ptr test no sh in the shell we don't have to type the extension now when we come down here we should see 99 or no, 100. We should see 100. And we do. And now the next round, we should see 200. Well, oh, we see 101. 102. Oh, well, yeah. That's because of our 4, right? Yep. But as you can see, it did still work. Just didn't work quite the way I wanted it to. But anyway it does work so hey so there you go so if you want to have something that moves fast and you still want to have something you can point to you make a static variable you set a pointer toward to it you pass it to a function the function can then uh, use the value in a, a stack based variable and then it can do whatever manipulations you need to do and it's going to be fast so there it is I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time thanks bye